a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. So, as you can see here, I am still lying down and hence can't do a video, but I was going through my archives and I found a video from last year that for some reason I forgot to share with everybody. It was a really good video of me going with a fellow photographer to a new location that I'd never been to before. He had, he just said meet here and took me on a sort of um, mystery tour really. And it was really amazing. And I didn't get the most amazing shots, although one of them I think was pretty good. See what you think. But what is good about it is I talk about why the photos didn't work and why I was still pleased I went and how I'm going to make the most of that location next time I go. So I hope you enjoy it. It was taken in December of 2021. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So I am in an unknown location. Well, I sort of unknown, I say un unknown. I know where it is, but I've never been here before. And I'm here with a local photographer called James Bell. You've probably seen his YouTube channel. If you haven't, I'll link it in the description. He does some amazing stuff around this area. And um, he is going to take me somewhere that I've never been before and I'm going to see what I can get. It'll be quite interesting. It's a pretty nice evening. I'm not sure if we're going to get amazing light and in fact I don't have a clue what we're going to shoot either. So see what we find and um, yeah, it should be fun. Right, okay, so it looks like we're going down a valley and um, you can see it behind me and Looks like there's gonna be some epic light. I hope the light doesn't get stopped by the cloud that's coming in. Fingers crossed it won't. But I don't think we're gonna go very high. So I think we're just gonna be down a valley. There's maybe gonna be some waterfalls. I honestly don't know what I'm gonna find around here, but looking just down there, apparently there's a, a, a crag up here called Eagle Crag. It's looking pretty epic. So yeah, I'm quite excited. I'm just looking around as I'm walking just to see, you know, if there's anything on the way. Um, how the light's catching the trees and the, the fells as well, because that's really, really important. Right, onward. Oh, this is really nice. Just found this little oasis here with these really amazing, um, I think they're oak trees, just the river in the background just looks so so nice so I don't I'm a conscious that I think there's something better a little bit further James isn't giving anything away but I get the impression that a little bit further there's something better so you can see him down there look um getting my shot <laughs> so I think I'm going to just keep going a little bit I'm going to grab this shot but I'm not going to spend a long time here um hopefully James will got out of the way and then I'm just going to grab just a quick vertical here and then we'll keep going. So I actually really like this woodland scene that is the first image I actually came to. And I feel like it would be brilliant in probably sort of late October when there's a few more trees with leaves on. It's just such a nice combination of branches and trees in the background as well. There's a lot of depth to it. If we've got a bit of mist here, it just could be incredible. The moss on the ground as well. There's so many different little combinations of compositions here as well. So it's definitely an image that I'm really excited to go back to. Okay, so walking into this scene here and I was just walking past down the path there and I noticed that this big old oak tree here just sits in the hill behind. It's just a really nice composition with this oak tree and then the mountain behind. Unfortunately, I don't think we've got quite the right light for it at the moment though um, because the, the sky is not great uh, and so we've got a very high contrast between the sky and, and the land. Ideally what we want is it's just the, the, the background to be illuminated or just the tree to be illuminated, some way of separating those two things. So I'm gonna take it, I'll point it out, but it's a good composition, but it's not the right lighting. And often, you know, you, 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 you get one without the other and that doesn't make a fantastic shot. What you want to get an exceptional image is both of them together. But this is amazing. Down there is cool as well. It's like the it's like turquoise water. That's super clear. 
Right, I'll shoot this and then we'll have a look elsewhere. So I've purposely left this image fairly flat. I could have edited it and tried to pull out some features in it, but I think this is a good example of an image that you're just not going to be able to with editing get anything great. The tree blends into the background because the light difference between the two um, elements. I do feel that this is an image that needs uh, leaves on the tree, and I think you either need some fog or atmosphere or light to separate that tree from the mountain in the background. Maybe a, uh, an overcast sky, a more dark day. There's quite a lot of other complicated elements here as well, like those green bushes that I pointed out. So I think it's okay, but I don't think it's going to make an amazing image. So this is the sort of turquoise clear water I was talking to you about. <laughs> this is just so amazing and there's obviously because i haven't planned it i don't know anything about it then i don't really know what's what's ahead and there's that temptation to just stay and just photograph this because i think it's amazing but james has just tipped me off and says there might be something better around the corner so we're going to keep walking um in reality what i'd usually do is plan it out a lot in advance but also, if you come back to a location again and again, then you get a little bit better and you start to see things that you didn't see in the time before. That is so important, and I'm going to talk about that in another video. But for now, I don't think I am going to stop and take a picture of here, just because I feel like these oak trees in the background just merge into the rocks a little bit. They maybe need some leaves on them. I'm going to go a little bit further around, see what we can find. I've got a feeling it's going to open up a little bit more. It might be more of a vista type shot. But this is. So amazing, I'm quite excited now, quite excited. The sun's just coming out. In fact, it might just be going in again, which is not good, but you can see just behind me that the sun is spectacular down this valley. Um, so I think Shooting down here, a wider type vista shot is going to work quite well. We've got to hope the sun stays out for a little bit. If it doesn't, then so be it. But um, I think we're going to walk a little bit further down here, see what we can find. So, so nice. <sighs> okay, we've just had the most epic light. Really, really epic. And um, I got my camera out, I got my long lens out, because there's a lone tree. You can probably just about make it out. If I just point the camera this way, just there, it's really tiny. Um, and it's just at the sort of bottom of this valley. It looks really nice. The light was sort of shining behind it and it stood out. I came lower though, because height makes a big difference in compositions. So just by coming a little bit lower down, it enabled me to, to get that um, tree against the background a little bit better. Unfortunately, when I came down lower, the light wasn't as good, but this is epic. I think I might prefer just a little bit further that way, but for sunset, if the clouds stay, that's what we need. need we need the clouds to stay where we want them to stay, but not where the sun is. It's what photographers are like. We're pretty fussy when it comes to clouds, but this is, this is amazing. Right, so I've got my long lens on. I'll take another shot. And um, yeah, just keep looking because there's probably all sorts of things all around. When you come to a new place, you've got to observe so much and try not to get carried away by just shooting everything. This was a great example of being in the wrong place at the right time. I needed to be lower down, maybe a little bit closer to the tree, because that tree needs to be in the light in the background. It needs to be silhouetted in that light to really bring it to life. You can see that if you draw a line down where diagonally where the light's coming through, the bottom right of this image is just fairly boring, really. Um, there's a few distractions like the rock in the very corner, so it's not a great image this. The light's amazing, but it doesn't really have all the elements to piece together to make something that's really special. The wider image I think is a little bit nicer, but again I feel like the tree needs to be in that light in the background. For that to happen I need to be in a different location. Okay, so we've just arrived at this pretty epic scene with this really nice sort of cascading waterfall here um, in a quite wide valley we've walked a little bit further down the valley and this tree is just really amazing it's tricky with a tree like this though because you've got to find an angle i think where it, it's in the sky you don't want it crossing that horizon in the background too much um, so i'm going to try and explore around you know just take it easy have a coffee probably 
and just try and look at the scene before I jump in and try and take a photo. See if I can see anything that might work well. Um, I've noticed there's a little bit of ice in some of these pools. Maybe I can inc include that in an image. But I'm going to observe for a bit. That's what I'm going to do first because there's a tendency when you're in a new scene to just grab your camera and just jump straight in. And, um, and hope that it lights up at sunset. I don't know how long it is till sunset, but it's probably... It's about an hour and ten minutes. I haven't got that long. <laughs> Okay, so I've been looking around um, just around the waterfall trying to find something that I think will be interesting. Um, I want the foreground. It's all about the foreground, this. We've got this tree. That's going to take care of itself. We're going to be low enough so the tree's in the sky. But it's all about the foreground. So I want to find a bit of waterfall where it's nice and smooth and it's not interrupted by a rock that's just going to, when the water's a bit smoother, it's going to look really jarring. So I think here it's going to work quite well. So I'm going to set my camera up here. And when I've got it set up, I'll show you what, it, what it's like. But yeah, I think it's going to look pretty good. The sky is looking fairly epic. Now, the disadvantage of going low is you don't get the, the depth of the waterfall so much. But I think it's going to be okay. I think this will work quite well. And the reflected light into the water is nice as well. Okay, so you can see here that I've got a shot quite low it's quite nice with the sky and the tree but this rock I feel like is ruining it so I'm going to go around the corner and see if I can find anything there and then I'm going to try and shoot this waterfall down here because I feel like it might be a little bit better the sky is turning out to be amazing <laughs> oh this is amazing I've had such a good few days photography right so and basically with this it's just shooting it don't need a filter I'm shooting at about f11 and um, focusing just on the tree really, it's nothing to it. You don't need to worry about the focus of the foreground because it's all moving water anyway. Right. This is a better position because I've got like fl free flowing water over all the rocks. You can see that you know, these rocks are all got water going over them. So there's nothing that sort of jars the eye, no sort of rock. I mean, it's fine to have that rock that jars the eye, but I think you've got to have some sort of balance. So I've got that free flowing water. It looks really good. Um, and then the bottom of it is like half of the image is just this sort of, sort of um, almost like this pattern that, that the water's making and I think that's reflected in the sky as well I'm always looking for that anywhere where there's reflected patterns so you can see that the sky there has got quite a lot of pattern in it so I'm trying to sort of reflect that in the in the water here and I've got it on um, ISO 64 don't need a filter again about a fifth of a second to get that pattern right and um, yeah it looks pretty epic looks really really epic the sky is just amazing it's going to turn really special the sky i think so i'm still going to shoot down there i think but this is it doesn't go better than this <laughs> wow this is amazing so i think i almost got that connection between the clouds and the water you never know when you have a little bit of a longer exposure just how that water is going to form it's not quite formed how i imagined it in my head but I really like the connection between the water and the sky still. I still think there's some patterns that connect together really nicely. And that tree in the middle works quite nicely as well. I like this. I think it's, I think it's a good image. I just feel like I needed more time just to fine tune that composition. And I probably needed waders because I think if I had got in the water a little bit, um, even though it's fast flowing, there was an area where I could have put my, my leg I think I could have got just slightly better compositions to the left, which would have improved it. These are the two images when the cloud changed and there's that nice cloud that's lit up. I like, um, you can see the difference here between a shorter exposure. I think it was a tenth of a second than like a half a second. I like the half a second for the water a lot better. 
You've always got to experiment with exposure level. It always changes no matter where you are. I always try and shoot at different exposure lengths, but you can see the difference here. And then finally, this wider landscape view. I, I like this. This is probably my favorite image of the set, to be honest. I like the fact we've got this glow in the background. I like the wider image. I quite like that diagonal coming through. Um, it would have been nice if the rocks were wetter, I think. Um, I think if the rocks were really wet, I think that would have added something to the, this image, just giving it something a little bit more, more special. Um, but yeah, I like this. I think it's pretty good. So that was pretty amazing. <laughs> Thanks ever so much, James, for bringing me to this location. Um, it was, we didn't get a light though, did we, quite? No, we were teased for a few times as usual, weren't we? It's just giving us an yeah. idea of what we could. I mean, the clouds were right. It, there must have been a bank of cloud behind the fells in the distance, I would imagine. But Yeah, anyway, yeah, we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't get it. it it's, <laughs> it's, no, it's no big deal. Um, I just want to ask you a quick, quick question. So when you found this location because you know I've been to Lake District hundreds of times never been here before yeah how how did you find it so how do you go looking for places like this yeah so in its simplest form really um, I came up here a few years ago not this far off just down to the bottom and it's always been on my list of places to return to uh, specifically Eagle Crag which is quite a nice where well, you saw the oak tree and everything else so I came up here early autumn and I actually flew the drone up this valley. Oh, okay. And, I, and in the distance, I saw this lone tree. Ah. And you know what we're like with lone trees. It's like... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I kind of just thought, wow, look, you yeah. know. So I flew the drone right up this valley, saw it and thought, right, next time I come here, I'm... Because I was focused more on the, the river down there. So I just... Yeah, it was just exploration, really. Ah, that's cool. Yeah. So the drone is what you need. No, I mean, it's just... <laughs> I think exploration is a thing. I look at maps a lot. I look at Google Earth a lot, trying to find pinpoint things. There's yeah. lots of different ways that you can try and find, um, you know, amazing locations. But I just want to thank James for bringing me here. It was a really interesting... Not knowing anything about location is really odd, I have to say. And yeah. there's some p positives. Um, I, I'd like to be better planned, I think, because I'd like to know what I'm getting into. But um, I actually think I got a reasonable image. Um, again, most of my best images come when I repeat visit places, yeah. come yeah, again yeah, and again and again. I always say that to everybody, but. Well, well, I think from my point of view, we've obviously been talking about meeting up for a while and you've sent me a few messages saying, where are we going? What's it going to be like? And I can see that you're very, you, you are a very, you know, you're a professional guy who wants to know what he's getting into. And I kind of wanted to shake that up a little bit, really, with respect, you know, and say, yeah. well, Let's surprise you. And I wanted you to come away from here going, oh my God, this is like an epic find, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can come back here in your yeah. own time. And it was, it, was, it was, it was, so thanks for that. No, so it's been, it's been James, cool. James got a YouTube channel, as I said right at the beginning. And, um, you know, I definitely recommend going to support James on his channel because there's some really great content, especially around the Lake District, really amazing. Um, and yeah, you've also got books and prints amazing prints thank you um, so yes, thank you yeah, yeah so go and check james out i'll leave the links to his instagram and his youtube below so i hope you enjoyed this week's video from last year before i go i just want to say thanks to everybody that's ordered seascapes and that brings me on to this week's sponsor which is squarespace without squarespace i couldn't have possibly sold seascapes they make it possible for me to build an online store and make it super easy to change things like the homepage or add new products. So I just want to show you that quickly. So if I wanted to change this banner here, I can just go into the banner, I can remove that image and then go and find a new image. So say I've got this image here, I want to put on, just drag and drop it, simple as that. And then when that's loaded, I can decide where I want the focus of it. So maybe I want it about there, save that and that will update the home page with that new image. And you can see that looks really, really fantastic. This is probably the image you'll see at the moment. So if you want to go and order Seascapes, um, if you haven't already, then there's still a few copies left. The way I know that is it's really easy for me to check my orders. So I can go in here and either go to my inventory, or if I want to, I can check what orders I've sold recently. So I can go into my orders here, I can see um, what state they're in, whether they're pending or fulfilled, whether I've posted them. 
um, whether somebody's ordered seascapes and woodlands and, and this little graphic here is really easy i can export that and it upload this data into um, the post office so that i can easily post these things which makes it super simple and then with the inventory here i can check the inventory of my stock as well which is so invaluable so squarespace is an all-in-one platform it's really easy to build a website and it's super, super simple to build a shop as well and take credit cards. So if you're looking to do that, if you're looking to set up your own um, photography business, then I definitely recommend Squarespace. Just head over to squarespace.com forward slash Nigel for 10% off. Okay, until next Sunday, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe I'll be able to get out a video next Sunday. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye.